Bonjour guys, this portion of the video was sponsored by Babbel. Babbel is a conversation-based language learning app. With just 10 minutes a day, you'll be talking like a pro in the language of your choice. I chose French because I plan to take a trip over to Europe. I want to visit France, Switzerland, and Belgium. And with Babbel, I know I'll gain the skills to move about with ease, order interesting things on a menu, and have great conversations with locals. Let me show you what a lesson on Babbel looks like. Babbel teaches real world practical conversations. For example, I learn about travel, business, and relationships. The lessons are no more than 10 minutes and they're very interactive. I'll just start off with my very first lesson and show you guys what it was like. There are also, <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> There are also multiple ways to learn. So there are podcasts, games, lessons, and even live classes with top teachers. So it says, did you know aside from France, French is the official language in 28 countries? Two of these are France's neighbors, Belgium and Switzerland. Ça va? How's it going? Ça va. So as you see, it's very interactive, it's very fun listen and pick and you can even talk into it in some lessons so you get to work on your sentence you get to work on your vocabulary you get to work on how it sounds and also don't forget you can talk to a real life person and fix up anything that you might have a problem with if it's just by yourself get up to 65 percent off your subscription by clicking the link in the description box I will definitely love to know which language you guys will be choosing. So click the link down in the description box to get 65% off and let's have a chat in your intended language. Bye. Hi guys, this is my mom. You are familiar with her. She's the one that never smiles in my videos. <laughs> But um, today I'm here to, oh, well, let me introduce her. This is Megan Thompson, Dr. Megan Thompson. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm um, a registered nurse currently. Also have my um, nurse practitioner, adult geriatric nurse practitioner, and my doctor of nursing practice. Working as a um, travel nurse in New York right now planning on transitioning to a nurse practitioner position in the substance abuse um, field. Do you have anything to tell them about your actual self, and not your job? Um, like what do you like to do? Those read. Subjects? I love to read. Yeah. I love to watch Netflix. I mean, some movies. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty much like only movies, no, no series. Mm -hmm. um, I think I like adventure. But I'm exploring that. She don't like no adventure. <laughs> don't like, I, I like adventure, but not with my daughter. Wow. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Anyways, guys, so I have some questions to ask mommy about, you know, transitioning and migrating to America from Jamaica. So I have 11 questions in total. It shouldn't take too long, but I think it'd be great to hear her opinion, especially because a lot of you live abroad, so you might have similar reasons on why you decide to move. And then some of you who are in Jamaica and who are in other countries are figuring out, like, do you want to move to Jamaica? Do you want to move to America? Do you want to move somewhere else? So let's jump into it. Why did you move to America? I didn't really have a choice. My mother um, migrated to America back when I was 11 years old. And when I at 31, my papers came through. So I didn't really want to go, but everyone said it's going to be a great opportunity for your daughter. You're going to give her a good education. It's going to be a good place to move to. It's different, but then Jamaica, you will you'll do good there. And I'm, I'm pretty much, I was doing good in Jamaica, but. I took everyone's advice. I wasn't happy about it, but um, my general reason was moving was because I wanted to provide more for my child. Okay. What was your hopes for your new life in America? Didn't really have much. Um, 
before I moved to um, New York, I was a assessor, a loss adjuster. What's that? Somebody who um, assessed damages on cars. So that was my job at the time. I was working with a, um, a company that have um, various locations all over Jamaica in a, um, a good position. But um, so when I moved to the United States, I wanted to go to school. I want to go to the Mitchell Estimating Guide. I want to continue my education. So I applied to GEICO because I want to go back into insurance because I was attending Insurance College of Jamaica at the time. Of course, it um, didn't work out because I have a my accent was too thick, so Geico didn't hire me. So I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I was um, working in my sister's doctor's office, and that's how I get into nursing. But I, it, it wasn't an expectation. I want to go back home, but everyone said, "Hold out a little further." So I planned to leave. And I did plan to leave. And I did leave. You never shared that with me that you did <laughs> plan to leave. I planned to leave. I, I didn't want to. 2009, I want to go back home. It's cold. It's depressing. I wanted to go back home. Mm -hmm. So I packed my bags 2009 and I went to Jamaica. No intention of coming back. But then they convinced me, go to Florida. And my boyfriend at the time had some friends, so I go to Florida. And my sister had some friends also. Kind of, you know, okay, you can stay with this one here, you can stay here. Uh, my sister convinced me, I'll keep Shade for you. Be calm. Yeah, I'll keep Bikana. Shade is her name that we call her at home. So I agreed to it. And I stayed in Florida for six months. It wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I wanted, so consequently I moved back to New York. Okay. That sounds sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very real. It's very real, especially what you're talking about with the weather and seasonal depression and you know, not everything not lining up as you'd want it exactly as you got there. So I understand. I understand this. And I think a lot of you guys might understand this as well. Well number three is why did you choose to go to America instead of somewhere else? As I said, for your question number one, I didn't choose to go. Mm -hmm. My mother my, my mother migrated when I was 11 and she was America. We didn't have much family in England. I mean, I have aunts there, but they never indicate that they want us to come to England. One of my brother lives in Canada. He didn't indicate that he wants us to come. So my only opportunity to travel was America. It wasn't anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even um, foreign minded as what most people would say. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a passport until I got my paper that I need to go for an interview on January 8th. So I had to do a little rush thing and get passport for me and my daughter. But I, it wasn't my intention to leave, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, I also had a follow-up for that. If you had the choice, which you say you didn't really have a choice, but if you had the choice, let's be hypothetically speaking, would you have gone to the UK, Canada, or another country, or would you have still stuck with America? Mm. Knowing what you know now, going back, if you had the choice, where would you go? Um, honestly speaking, I probably would have stuck with America. Yeah. yeah. Why? I mean, if looking back at those um, past 13, 13, almost 14 years, I mean, I've achieved a lot, and maybe it was because of where I landed. Mm -hmm. So how how different would life be in Canada or in or in um, England? I don't know. So looking back, if I was gonna choose me, America would have probably be it. Wow. Where would you guys choose? And if you are thinking about it now, where are you planning to go? Drop a comment down below and let us know. So number four might be a tough one, or might bring up some sad memories. But what was the most difficult part about leaving Jamaica? It wasn't difficult for me to leave Jamaica because I wasn't planning on staying. Mm -hmm. But you say you, you no, um, had no intent to go. I had no intention of going, but I didn't have the intention of staying either. Mm -hmm. In the back of my head, I'm coming back. Oh, okay. But then when I get there, everyone railroaded me into thinking that this is a great place. Stay. What do you think about that? What do you think about that even now with people? 
especially in Jamaica and in um, these developing countries. I think America, UK, and Canada is the best thing since sliced bread. It's not. It's not. Um, I think you can make life anywhere in the world. It's just that your determination and the ambition that you have. So you just have to have the drive to do it. I don't think um, if I had stayed, I mean, if I had stayed in Jamaica, I would probably be more successful than I am today. So, um, to be honest with you, it's, it's not the country, it's the person. Okay, that's not a bad answer, thank you. Number five, uh, what was it like when you first arrived to the US? <laughs> so, if you guys didn't know, I don't think I ever talked about it. Well, I did, I, I believe I did talk about it. But we came here in March. We came to, we went to New York, Buffalo, New York in March. No, we didn't. Was it not March? No. When was we it? went, we, our, our day of arrival in the United States was March, I'm um, sorry, May 31st. Okay then. 2008. May 31st? I remember, May 31st. Because mm. I remember not being Del able Delta to have Airline, a birthday party in April. Delta Airline into Atlanta, then to Buffalo. May 31st. Never forget it. That's my anniversary. I'm going to fact check that, guys. <laughs> let you know, because okay. I remember not being able to have a birthday party in Jamaica. And Yvonne was... left in, in March. That's my sister. She left in March. Mm -hmm. We left in May. Because we didn't get our papers in, uh, until March. Until because March? we had to do a DNA. Oh, okay. But um, what was it like when you arrived in May? Well, um... Talk about the weather, talk about how you felt, talk about the views, talk about everything. It was kind of like, how would I put it? I was um, a little apprehensive because this is something that I've watched on television a couple of times and I think America is this big country and moving to America. Yeah. Moving to America has been something where um, when, I've re when I finally get my interview, I was like, okay, well, what is it gonna be like? What's it gonna be like? So Atlanta was okay because the airport was kind of like, wow. I mean, you take a train and uh, underground. It's my first time taking a train. And then we go upstairs, and then upstairs is like all these shops and all these. Um, so it was kind of like, wow, nice. Like culture shock. Uh, pretty much because I'm not used to that. The, the, the only escalator I've been on is the one that was in New Kingston. Which one then? <laughs> not fun to add up with this. No, there's one, there was one that was in New Kingston. Um, I forgot what the building name. Um, that was the only escalator. Um, and it's very short. Like, I'm right there to there. If you guys know of it, then drop it down in the comment yeah. section so we can look it up. So, um, in Atlanta, I was like, wow. Then we get to Buffalo. And I remember being picked up from the airport. And I'm looking around and I said, okay, this is gonna, where I'm going to live for the time being. And it didn't look, I wasn't impressed. I mean, my sister lived in a good neighborhood. She lives in Amherst, which is upscale. Mm -hmm. so, of course, um, when you get to Amherst, we said, yeah, this is nice. But then you look at the houses, you expect more. So, um, no, I didn't, I wasn't happy because I thought more, I expected more. Mm -hmm. Number six, what did you miss about Jamaica? Everything. Everything. Jamaica, you, um, when I was living in Jamaica, I was a hustler. You tell me something to make money, I'm on it. You tell me something to do, I'm like, let's do this and make some money. That's me. Let's go here. Fine, let's go to the beach on a Sunday. Let's go to a party. That was what drives um, Jamaica. For me, Jamaica for me. Um, my best friend and I, we used to basically go party hopping. So here I am in Buffalo, and the only party we know is downtown. Never been downtown, don't have a car. My best friend is not there, so I won't go, I won't go anywhere. I'm not gonna go my sister's um, into church. So it's not like she knows all the spot that we can go and enjoy in our life. So for me, um, I miss everything about Jamaica. Most of all, the fact that I can't just get up and go to the beach on a Sunday. I can't go to the hair shop. I can't um, go to a party. And the food, yes, while we cook Jamaican food at home, is not the same. 
Yeah, the ingredients. The ingredients yeah. is really affect how the food tasted. That and also um, my skin change. So the weather in Buffalo is different. So now my skin become a little bit different. It become dry and thick. I lost my hair because I don't know if it was the water, but my hair started falling off. I mean, everything go back, but it's different. So I'm thinking that my body make some changes too. So it was it was different. Um, people, I mean, while they like my Jamaican accent, they everybody comments on it, and it was kind of annoying. Like everyone was like, "Oh my God, you sound so nice," but then um, you sound so different also. But they don't realize that they too sound different to me. So it was, to me it was kind of annoying when people keep commenting on the fact that I have this very thick accent. So I miss Jamaica because Jamaica, would, I don't feel like people judge you um, based on, what, on, on some of the things that they judge you in America for. Okay, that's true. That's a valid reason. Explain the first time you got back to Jamaica and how did you feel? The first time from your left. I cried. Oh my God, going to Montego Bay and then when the plane go around and you see that red stripe sign on the hill. I literally start crying up. I mean, it was probably the best thing in the world. It was the best feeling in the world. When I came outside, I was like, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. That was November 14th. In Japan, I'm going to kiss the gang. I said, thank you, No, I did not. No, I did not. No, I did not. But I reached a stage, I guess. Close. But I didn't reach a stage. Why? Yeah, my sister realized that I was getting depressed. Yeah. And they said, but because um, I was like, stop talking, I didn't want to interact much. And they're like, why don't you go to Jamaica with, with mom? So my mom went November 14, back in 2008. So I accompanied her just for a week, and it was good. It kind of cement me back to where I need to be and what I need to do. You remember anything that you did? Yeah, but it's not for camera. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, mommy. Uh, okay then. Number eight. Where did you find strength in difficult times? So you shared with us that you know you went through a depressive period, um, and just everything that you went through overall, even with not getting the job um, at Geico. How how did you overcome that? I'm never a person to sunk in depression. I always feel like I have an inner strength, and then. Maybe looking back at um, Megan then, I've been through a lot, which um, Mikana knows from the age of 11 coming up. So what I, what, the most important part of it was throughout that time, I le learned to lean on me. If I have any doubts about something or something is not going my way, I'm just like shrug my shoulder and say, well, it is, what is not for me is not for me. And if it is, if it is what it is. Yeah, so I kind of make my own little steps, my, create my own lane. Something don't work, I move, move to a different part. That's a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Always lean on yourself. As much as you feel down, just try to think about how many things you can accomplish if you keep going. Right. Yeah. Uh, number nine. What is the thing you're proudest of so far and why? Mommy well, we have a lot to be proud of, but let's hear what she's most proud of and why. I think paying off my credit card debt. <laughs> yeah, that's my most proudest thing because I thought I would drown in those. And I paid them off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, education is something that uh, my mother has always instilled in us that if we want anything, we have to go for it. So to me, education is second nature. Like like Bikana, when she was going to high school, she knew she had to go to college. It wasn't something that was a debate. She just knew that this is something that she's, she's going to do. So for me, if I want to live a good life, I'm going to educate myself to get the best job out there. So having a good education, yes, I'm proud of it. But I think if I was put into another situation, I would have done the same thing. Mm. Okay, thank you for that. Paying off your credit card bills. Yep, paying them off. Was it like over 500,000? 
kind of. <laughs> you never have a job then. <laughs> no, but when you have back to back monthly bill, it's it's something that's like it's hard to get out. Yeah, of. and then you yeah. you think and then you keep falling down. Sorry to cut you. You keep it's like when you have to pay. Let's say a hundred dollars. It's a recurring thing that every month you keep. You feel you like you have a new salon yeah. in it. But, but and then, then it does even move. To, it stays the same place. It even to when you try to save, it's hard to save because you have to pay for your credit cards and you have to pay for your bills. And then, you know, it's hard to put in that, that balance in life. Number 10. If you had the choice, would you do it all again? Yeah, with some changes along the way. Okay. Like what? Can you get two changes? Um, one, I probably would have um, got a cheaper route for school. Two, I would never, ever, ever, ever buy a house in Buffalo. But it's great to own a house. Yes, but not in Buffalo. I don't want to live there, so now I have a house. I don't want to live in a city, in that city. Mm. So if I was gonna, no, about your credit card, you wouldn't do that differently too. My credit card debt was a necessity. I was I moved to America with nothing and I had to live so I use a credit card to live so I don't, I'm not ashamed of them mm -hmm. they helped me to achieve what I need to achieve so the minute I can pay them off I pay them back okay. because they were they were necessary mm -hmm. they were necessary so I don't knock them mm -hmm. it's just that I'm happy that I don't have them anymore <laughs> <laughs> um, number 11 the final question to the people who are thinking of moving to another country, what advice would you tell them? Ah, <sighs> uh, it's a, it's a um, two-headed sword. A double-headed sword. Yeah, a double-headed sword. So, um, one, I know earlier I said to you, it's not the country, it's the person. A lot of a lot of people think moving to America is great. Not just America, it's any country in general. I can only speak with America. Sorry. But um people think moving to America is great. But your whole mindset and your whole lifestyle is gonna change. The things that you enjoy in Jamaica you will not enjoy it in America. I cannot imagine working um back when I was twenty two working seven days a week. I cannot imagine working on a holiday or working on weekends or working night shift. But then you get to America and all these things are out the door. You have to do what you have to do to pay your bill or to live. So it's like at the end of the day you have to decide what do you want or why are you moving to this country. You have to set some goals and I mean goals change along the way but you have to have some something to look forward to at the end of the tunnel. Because moving to America is not going to be like an easy transition. No matter if you have somebody who is paving the way for you, it is not going to be an easy transition. You have to give up, give a lot to achieve whatever you want to achieve. For the folks who feel like moving is an option and they have a good life in Jamaica, I'll say stay. I mean, I wish I could, I had somebody tell me this before I moved that I could have just get my green card and just back and forth, back and forth and so forth. Because the flexibility of living in Jamaica and traveling is much better than living in America and traveling. I mean, I'm privileged in terms of like I can take vacation because of the type of work I do. But there's a lot of Jamaicans who live in America who can't take a vacation, who can't afford a vacation. So that is something that you have to think about. You want to come to, you want to visit your family, you can't. I've met Jamaicans during my travel experience um, and they haven't been back home in ages because of the lifestyle that they um, they are living. They can't afford it. It may not seem that way to you in Jamaica or wherever you are and people don't really want to say that, hey I'm struggling here. A lot of people are struggling. So um, think twice. like. Kind of figure out if you're gonna go to school or you're gonna go there and you have to go there and make some changes, some significant changes if you wanna you wanna achieve it. You cannot remain the same person you were in Jamaica because a different culture, totally different. Mm -hmm. Totally different. You may come in from a how many million dollar job in Jamaica and go to America and just making a thousand dollars a month. That's not 
that's a big adjustment. So you have to really and truly think about what are you giving up, what are you going to achieve for what you give up. Mm. Yeah. That's true. And for people, um, no matter which country you're going to, it's always going to be an adjustment. And I know some people don't have the choice to choose. Um, like, I never had the choice to choose. They never asked me my opinion on it. Even though I was a child, but most parents don't ask their kids. So, I know some of you in America who were brought to America, or even if you're in the UK and you were brought to the UK as a child, and you think, oh, this is a place where you feel connected to but then at the same time you don't feel connected to and you want to experience that then definitely travel to that place visit it like mommy said try to get a green card or a visa and see if this is where you would like to spend your life get some advice from people who live there and try to get the most real advice from them tell them to tell you the hard truth of what life is really like before you make any big decisions so yeah Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below if you want to answer any of the questions that I asked. If you want to share any opinions or your experiences, I would greatly appreciate it. And I just want to thank our special guest today for coming on who said she'll never come on to another video again. But we doubt that's true. Um, I'm just being a nice mom. Yeah, she is. So what do you want to say? You want to say bye? Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you for watching.